Hey everyone, and welcome back to our NREMT paramedic exam prep show. These 30 practice questions cover a selection of content on emergency medical operations, like mass casualty incident management, transport operations, and terrorism. For hundreds of more questions like these, make sure you get Brainscape's NREMT paramedic flashcards. Okay, let's get started. Question one, what does NIMS stand for? National Incident Management System. Question two, what are the six major components of the NIMS? One, command and management. Two, preparedness. Three, resource management. Four, communications. Five, supporting technologies. And six, ongoing management. Question three, what is the role of the logistics section of the NIMS? The logistics section is responsible for communications equipment, facilities, food, water, fuel, lighting, medical supplies and equipment. Question four, which seven EMS supervisors make up the medical incident command? The one triage supervisor, two treatment supervisor, three transportation supervisor, four staging supervisor, five rehabilitation supervisor, six special rescue supervisor, and seven morgue supervisor. Question five, what are the four triage categories? One, red, immediate, two, yellow, delayed, three, green, walking wounded, four, black, expectant, unlikely to survive or dead. Question six, who developed the first standardized list of equipment to go on ambulances? The American College of Surgeons. Question seven, at what point during a shift must you check your ambulance and make sure all equipment and supplies are ready for a call? At the beginning of every shift. Question eight, what eight warning signs might indicate an impending problem with an ambulance that should be fixed right away? Belt noise, brake fade, brake pull, drift, steering pull, steering play, wheel bounce, and wheel wobble. Question nine, what is the difference between disinfection and sterilization? Disinfection involves the killing of pathogens by applying a chemical to the surface. Sterilization uses heat to destroy all microbial contaminants. Question 10, what are the three rules for using the lights and sirens on an ambulance? One, it must be a true emergency. Two, both the lights and sirens should be used. And three, the driver must operate with due regard. Let's take a quick study break to remind you to sit up straight while you're listening to this. Remember, life in the field as a paramedic can be quite punishing, so it's important you develop a habit for keeping a straight, strong posture. Your back will thank you. Now, back to the questions. Question 11, define the term terrorism. Terrorism is a violent act to endanger human life and to intimidate or coerce a government because of political or social objectives. Question 12, what are the five major types of terrorist organizations? Violent religious zealots, political extremists, cyber terrorists, single issue terrorists, and narco terrorists. Subgroups include hate groups, lone wolves, patriot groups, cults, and militia groups. Question 13, what are seven examples of high value targets by terrorist groups? Military bases, metro systems, bus depots, airports, dams, government buildings, and hospitals. Question 14, what is the treatment for cyanide exposure and poisoning? Aggressive oxygenation and airway control. Question 15, what is the treatment for mustard gas vesicants exposure? Soap and copious amounts of water. Vesicants are agents that cause blistering. Question 16. What is the treatment for nerve agents like organophosphates? Pralidoxime or 2-PAM and atropine. 
Question 17. What is a technical rescue incident, TRI? A TRI is a rescue involving extrication, water or ice, trench collapse, or confined spaces. Question 18. What are the eight steps of a special rescue? 1. Preparation. 2. Response. 3. Scene size up. 4. Stabilization of scene. 5. Access. 6. Disengagement. 7. Removal. 8. Transport. Question 19. What does the term cribbing refer to? Tools that enhance safety and stability during vehicle extrication operations, like step chocks, wedges, and shims. Question 20. How do you properly break tempered glass on, for example, a vehicle? Use sharp pointed hand tools like a spring-loaded punch. If you're loving the challenge, I've set you with these practice questions. You'll find hundreds more with illustrations in Brainscape's adaptive mobile flashcards for the NREMT paramedic exam. Make sure you download those so that you can efficiently study anytime and anywhere, and you will crush the paramedic exam. Let's get back to answering more questions. Question 21, true or false? You should always gain access to a car through the front or back windshields. False, the front and back windshields are made from laminated glass, which is very difficult to break. Question 22, if an airbag did not deploy during a crash, how can you disconnect it to prevent a hazard? Cut or disconnect the battery. This will discharge the airbag capacitor. Question 23. When a section of ground collapses, what is the biggest danger for rescue? Secondary collapse because the ground is unstable. Question 24. What is Chemtrek? Chemtrek stands for the Chemical Transportation Emergency Center, which is a 24-hour service line that assists responders in managing possible hazards. Question 25. What does a MC-306.406 tanker carry? Flammable and combustible liquids. Question 26. What does a MC-307.407 tanker carry? Flammable liquids, mild corrosives, or poison. Question 27. What is the difference between primary and secondary exposure? Primary exposure refers to the initial exposure to a hazardous material. Secondary exposure involves the passing on of the exposure from one person to another. Question 28. Give three examples of local effects caused by exposure to a hazardous material. One, the reddening of skin, two, localized pain, and three, the formation of blisters. Question 29. Give three examples of systemic effects caused by exposure to a hazardous material. One, damage to the airway, two, an altered mental status, and three, effects to the heart. Question 30. What does the mnemonic sludgem help you recognize and what does it stand for? It can help you recognize organophosphate poisoning. It stands for salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, GI activity, emesis, and meiosis. That's the end of our exam prep show on emergency medical operations. To reach full mastery, remember to study using Brainscape. Our mobile and web app utilizes the latest in spaced repetition techniques, allowing you to optimize your study time and track your progress in great detail. Of course, when you're driving, cooking, exercising, or otherwise unable to navigate the app, be sure to keep listening to the rest of this hands-free studying playlist. No matter what subject you're learning or what method you're using, Brainscape helps you rise to your challenge.